um, that's equally important, okay? All right, let's get started. Let's get started by talking about your third and fourth fingers. Uh, pinky, first string, third fret, ring finger, second string, third fret. Now, you want to only apply as much pressure as you need, but don't get into a death grip here with your fretting hand, okay? Don't clench, don't press any harder than you have to. Try to keep your hand relaxed because your index and middle are going to be jumping around quite a bit, okay? Now, your right hand precision is going to be crucial because those two notes are going to be droning along for this entire exercise. And the sound of those two notes droning along can be quite uh, hypnotic to the listener. And you want the listener to be able to hear all the other things you're doing, okay? So it's, it's not going to be enough to strum broadly across all five or six strings here, okay? You want to articulate the relevant bass notes. Otherwise, the listener is not going to hear what you want them to hear, and you're in charge of what they hear, right? So we're going to be talking in the next clip about reaching in and getting very specific notes, uh, as well as strumming across multiple strings, okay? Let's get started. Now let's get started with the first two chords from Wish You Were Here. Of course, they're both going to have the ring and the pinky on the two treble strings third fret. Now, we have the four finger G chord. Middle finger, sixth string, third fret, index finger, fifth string, second fret. Easy, right? Now the next one, you only have to move one finger. Your middle finger, fourth string, second fret. My index stayed right where it was, 5th string, 2nd fret. So we have the G and this chord right here called the E minor 7. G, E minor 7. Now we all know the intro to I Wish You Were Here. Okay, using those two chords. Now let's talk about what we can do with those two chords. By the way, you heard me mention the E minor 7 name a minute ago. Don't get freaked out by that name. You know, it sounds like a, a math equation, right? An E minor 7. It's no big deal. It's an E minor with, with uh, there's your typical E minor, with these extra two fingers added on. But it does get a great colorful sound. If you have any uh, you know, curiosity about music theory and where names like this comes from, like, you know, E minor 7, I have a great uh, series called Music Theory for Guitarists. You can find it on my YouTube channel and uh, even more extensively on my website, Song by Q, right down there. Okay, so a G and E minor 7, a four finger G and E minor 7. So let's talk about what you can do with those. Um, let's talk about hammer ons, okay? We've got the four finger G. Now watch this. I'm going to do a hammer on the sixth string. I'm going to hit it open and then hammer down on the third fret with my uh, middle finger. Watch this. the E minor, I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to do the hammering with my uh, fifth string, my index in the air, and then the fifth string second fret. Just a couple ways to get creative there with hammer-ons and these two chords. Notice again, the droning is continuing on with the, uh, with the two treble strings, right? But I'm being more articulate with my uh, pick. So I'm giving the listener a little more for their money and I'm having more fun myself as well, okay? Now, how about a nice uh, walk down and a walk up, a way to connect the G and the E minor. Watch this. I'm going to hit the sixth string. And now watch this on the sixth string. And we're going to do it reverse. Notice I'm connecting the G and the E minor with that walk down. So in slow motion, sixth string on the G and a couple strums. Now here's my walk down. Sixth string, third fret, sixth string, second fret with my index finger, open sixth string, and here's my E minor for two strums. And I'm going to reverse it. G. Okay, getting creative with these two chords. Okay, YouTubers, I hope your ring and your pinky aren't getting tired over there on the two treble strings.